Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we answer your questions to do with bike maintenance and any problems that you might have that are cycling related. Now, each week you can submit your questions on social media, uh, on the app, and in the comments section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Now, this is a special lockdown edition from inside my house because the pandemic is still ongoing, but it's not all bad news. Check out this amazing park toolbox that they sent me. It's a park tool, they've kindly sent me that. It's kind of like every kid's dream if you're a bike nerd like me to have a toolbox full of tools. But uh, yeah, so hopefully I can do some bike maintenance videos at home now, which is pretty awesome. But the only downside is I've got to give it back when all this has blown over, which is kind of, kind of a shame. Anyhow, first up this week, we've got a question from DJ Blanton, who says, great video once again. <laughs> Thanks. He says, can you post a quick message about the mounting method used for the bike in the background? Uh, he'd like to do the same with his. Well, quite a few people have been commenting on this, uh, and it's actually a bike uh, mounting wall system from a company called Cyclock. Now, it mounts via three points. There's one underneath each wheel, and then a third bracket that's been screwed into the wall with a retaining screw, well, big bolt, um, that holds the pedal, and that's why the cranks aren't at the three o'clock position, as loads of you keep pointing out, because it has to be at the six o'clock because the weight is carried on that upper pedal. It works well for, for my needs, which is I want to hang the bike on the wall because for me, my bike is like, well, it's a piece of art and I love it. And, uh, you know, I want to display it. But also, it's a really neat and tidy storage solution for the bike inside uh, my apartment as well, um, which really comes in handy. But there's you know loads of amazing solutions out there. It'd be really good if you've got any great indoor cycling storage solutions, um, submit them on the app, and it'll be good to have a look at how people are storing different things. That'd be really cool. Now, next question is from Buzzman, who says, "Ask GCN Tech, what happened to John?" Well. There was a rumor circulating that John had strayed too close to a 5G phone mast and been sucked into another dimension where the Illuminati lizard people were, uh, you know, developing bioweapons to attack humanity and take over the world. This is, of course, false. And the reality is that John just fancied stepping away from presenting and he wanted to do a different challenge and focus on something else and decided to work on the app. So make sure you download the app because John will see what you upload on there. But um, yeah, it's a great way for you guys to, our oh, thinking behind the app is it's a great way for you guys to sort of engage uh, with us and submit your content and it'll become a really good sort of interactive way that we can do all that. So yeah get involved. Uh, next question is from Ghost Spider KGS. He says, ask GCN, first of all, I appreciate every GCN team member working hard on and off camera at home. So my question is simple. It's been almost a year since I started cycling. Some of my friends laugh at me because I'm still using flat pedals. Thing is, I don't think I'm ready. I don't kind of feel ready yet that I belong in a cycling world. Do Am I doing something wrong here? Well, thanks man. I mean, it certainly is a challenge. I would say don't don't worry about cycling on flats. Like everyone is different, um, and you know, it's it's not it's not essential. If you don't feel com comfortable doing it, then there's no reason why you have to. The main thing is you get out on your bike and you enjoy yourself. But I obviously ride with clipless pedals, as as do all the other GCM presenters, and it's. Definitely nice being able to ride and generate power through the entire pedal stroke, being able to pull up on the pedals. You know, when when really powerful uh, sprinters are going for it, they're not just pushing down, they're pulling up as well. And so you can do that when you're clipped in. You've got to remember that the first time Bradley Wiggins rode with clipping pedals, he was, he was nervous. Everyone is. So don't worry about that. Give it a go, I would say, and see how you get on. And if, and if you know, you, you decide after you've given it a go, it's not for you. Then you can always go back to flats, can't you? Not, not a problem, but yeah, I'd, I'd give it a go. Uh, next question is from AD, who says, why might someone still choose 23 millimeter tires unless their frame limits their choice? Um, right, well, 
Yes, people would still use 23mm tyres and I still use 23mm tyres for specific things. So, for, for time trialling in particular, I would favour a 23mm on the front wheel. This is because above 40 kilometres an hour, aerodynamics of, of the tyre and the wheel uh, start to become very significant. That is the leading edge. And also you need to think about the way that the tyre interfaces with the front wheel. You don't want a tyre that mushrooms out over the front wheel. You want it to be nice and, and smooth is the transition between the tyre and the wheel is the is the conventional thinking on that. So that considered a narrower tyre on the front for uh, for a time trialing application definitely works. And on the track, people use narrower tires as well. And if you live in a place where there's smooth roads and the rolling resistance benefits from a slightly bigger tire aren't, aren't you know, that important, uh, rolling resistance and comfort benefits from a slightly bigger tire are important, then yeah, 23 is absolutely, absolutely fine. Um, next question is from Awakened Behemoth or behemoth, who says, uh, how durable are rear derailleur hangers? Um, well, they're actually designed to bend and break and to be a point of weakness, kind of like a crumple zone in a car. They absorb the energy of an impact should it happen. And it's the hanger that bends or breaks, not your frame or your rear mech, which are much more precious, expensive components. Um, I would advise that you always have a spare rear mech, especially if you travel anywhere with your bike, because the moment it breaks, you want to replace it immediately. And if you don't have one, sourcing the correct one, because pretty much every bike has its own specific one, uh, can be a little bit tricky and always inevitably take longer than you'd like it to. So yeah, might as well go on eBay or you know the internet or wherever you can buy a rear mech and get one just safely tucked away now. Next question from James Witt. I think that's how you pronounce your name. Sorry if I've got it wrong. Who says, can you tell me when the disc in a disc brake uh, needs to be replaced? Assuming it's straight and not warped, he's installing his second set of brake pads on his road bike tomorrow. Um, and he says, Ollie, your cameraman is the best. He's also invisible. Anyway, um, the truth is disc brake rotors on bikes like these, if you're wondering, they last blooming ages, right? But there is a specific uh, amount you're supposed to use them. So Shimano ones, for example, such as on my Orbea, they start out at 1.8 millimeters wide and they do gradually wear down and down and down. And the, well, guideline from Shimano is that after they get less than 1.5 millimeters in thickness, you're supposed to replace them. Um, this does take absolutely ages though, and um, I'm yet to replace a, a set, but I do tend to keep my bikes pretty clean. I'll clean it after I ride it and don't ride with dirty brakes. If you, you wear, it'll be quicker if, if you, your bike and your brake system is dirty and then you're pushing dirt into the rim and grinding it away. So, you know, take care, take care of them and they'll last longer. In case you're wondering how to measure the thickness of your disc brake rotors, well, you can just do that with some verniers. I don't have any here, actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, Park Talk, can you send me some verniers, please? <laughs> um, next question is from Alex Chastney. Uh, do all pros use bigger jockey wheels as they're more efficient? And uh, if so, why not? Well, you say they're more efficient. The jury's out, I have to admit. I, I mean, Science would suggest that bigger jockey wheels can be more efficient in the sense that they reduce drivetrain friction by not putting the chain through as tight an angle. So if you imagine the different links of the chain moving against each other um, in a tighter angle, say with a tiny cog at the front and a tiny cog at the back, the chain's moving through a tighter angle, so the chain pivots the links are moving against each other more and that movement is causing friction. Whereas when you go around bigger rings and bigger jockey wheel pulley wheels, the chain doesn't have to move as much. So there's less friction between the chain links. The thinking being that in doing so, you can save a few watts. It's only, I mean, it's very marginal and it does actually increase the faster you're going and the more force that's being put through the chain. However, it's important to point out that Shimano kind of refutes this. Shimano believes that, the, that there isn't 
a, a, an advantage to be gained from this. And that's why Shimano hasn't adopted bigger jockey wheels in its uh, group sets. I mean, there are a few things where people say, oh, they might be a bit less aerodynamic because there's much more surface area. And then at the higher speeds associated with the high powers, that then starts to magnify such an extent that it actually cuts out any of any of the friction benefits. But, you know, I'm, I'm not sure to, in all honesty, for personally, but some people say they're better, some people say they're not. Just went into a bit of a rabbit hole at explaining that. Um, but the simple answer is not all pros use them because not all pros are sponsored by them. If pros are sponsored by them, they'll use it. Um, if they're a Shimano sponsored team, they're probably told by Shimano not to use those particular systems as Shimano wants to show off its unadulterated, uh, beautiful rear mechs. Uh, the next question uh, is from Palav Kumar who says, I've got a question about cranks. Oh, I love questions about cranks. Uh, he says he recently got a bike that's got a nearly a full 105 group set. And the only thing that's missing is the crank set. He'd like to use the included bottom bracket um, to keep from spending any more money. But does this mean he's only limited to Shimano cranks? Or are there other cranks that are compatible with the Shimano Holotech 2 system? Not sure uh, how about to go choosing them, so uh, that would be great. Well, to be honest, if you've got a Shimano group set and you've got a Shimano bottom bracket, get a Shimano crank set. Right. It's going to be the easiest thing to do. And, you know, Shimano crank sets are excellent quality and there's loads of them available. I mean, you can pick up amazing bargains on crank sets, especially on eBay, because a lot of people will buy a bike and the crank set won't be the one they want. It'll either be too big or it'll be too small. And then they'll instantly swap it out at the point of purchase. So you can get crank sets that are basically new or nearly new that haven't really been used. And they go on eBay for, for much less money than the brand new price. So definitely uh, look down that route. Plus, you don't need to get the current generation uh, Shimano uh, 105 either. The Holotech crank sets of the previous generation will be compatible as well. So in your situation, I'd probably just be inclined to go with the Shimano one. Having said that, other brands do make um, bottom, well, chain sets that have the 24 millimeter axle that will fit in a Shimano um, bottom bracket. Uh, next question is from David Lamb, who says, does riding a bike with an indoor trainer put more stress on the frame and bottom bracket? Warranty concerns aside, is it better or safer to use a metal bike with an indoor trainer? Well, th there's been talk of this before. People always talk about this, but I have never known anyone break a carbon bike on a turbo trainer. That said, you're not really, you know, turbo trainers often aren't designed for full on sprinting. Uh, so you're not really going to be doing that on your, on your turbo trainer in the way that you, you could wrench a bike around outside. But yeah, I've never known anyone break them. Canyon did have a thing on older bikes where they said don't use them on indoor trainers, but now they've made them, they've like got rid of that. And, and now they say that, yeah, their bikes are safe to be used on indoor trainers. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't l let that stop you. I wouldn't worry about breaking your carbon bike. That is unless you are, you know, Chris Hoy and David Lamb is a pseudonym that you're hiding behind, Chris, and you're gonna be putting out two and a half thousand watts through your turbo trainer. Last question this week is from Will Stefanu, who says, hi, Ollie, love the show. I have a Boardman endurance frame with a P BB uh, PF30 bottom bracket. So that's a press fit bottom bracket with a 30 millimeter spindle. Um, and he's running Campagnolo super record. Uh, for his chain set. He'd like to change the bottom bracket to something like the token ninja type. Um, so yeah, I know what you mean there. And you're saying he's having difficulty sourcing a company to produce this. Do you have any suggestions, please? Yeah, uh, Wheels Manufacturing make them. So check that out. Uh, they make, they're an American based company. Um, and I've actually just used one of their bottom brackets. Um, you know, to, to put in a video on my time trial bike, which is a very similar thing. And one at PF30, it was a BB386 Evo, but BB386 Evo is very similar to PF30, uh, both press fit bearings with a 30 millimeter spindle. So um, yeah, so I, 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 I used one of those and put that in instead when I changed the bearings. I've actually done a video on it and it's 
it might yeah it should be out um just well it should be out now anyway yeah there you go check that out you'll see what i mean so there are solutions right well that's all we've got time for in this week's tech clinic i hope you found it useful and if you've got any questions bang them down in the comments and submit them on social media and on the app and keep them coming because we love having your questions and if you've got anything you particularly want to see as like a maintenance video or anything like that then let us know and we'll try and do it during the lockdown in my lockdown set right stay safe people and uh, yeah go and wash your hands